Hi, my name is Gary Weissman, Assistant Professor of Medicine and Informatics at the University of Pennsylvania Perelman School of Medicine. I'm excited to share with you today our project, Advancing Diagnostic Excellence for Older Adults Through Collective Intelligence and Imitation Learning. I am very grateful to the A2 Collective and the Penn AI Tech Pilot Program for supporting this project. This work would not be possible without our team members, Matt Press, David Ash, Lyle Ungar, Marty Pfeiffer, and Nick Bishop, all at the University of Pennsylvania Perelman School of Medicine. The National Academies defines a diagnostic error as not obtaining an accurate and timely diagnosis and not communicating that diagnosis to the patient. Diagnostic errors are a great source of increased patient morbidity, mortality, healthcare costs, and decreased patient satisfaction. This report from the National Academies identified information technology tools as potential sources of improvement for the diagnostic process. However, the report also recognized that there were very few demonstrations that such health IT systems actually improves diagnosis in clinical practice. Now, almost 10 years later, there is still a substantial evidence gap for how we might use health IT to achieve diagnostic excellence. Diagnostic excellence is especially important and challenging among older adults for several reasons. First, the scope of diagnoses or the range of different disease etiologies that are encountered among older adults is very broad. On average, older adults also have more comorbidities, which causes more complexity and uncertainty in the diagnostic process. Older adults have very high variation in their functional status, have high uncertainty in their prognosis, and because of age exclusions from clinical trials and other cohorts, there is less gold standard data to use in developing and testing diagnostic clinical decision support systems in this population. Older adults also experience a higher prevalence of cognitive impairment, higher rates of care fragmentation, and may also have higher need for or probability of including caregivers in the diagnostic process, all of which leads to more complexity. This is some preliminary data from our health system which, in which we identified the number of diagnoses associated with primary care encounters and describe the pattern of that, those diagnosis counts by the age of the patient. On the y-axis, you'll see the median number of ICD codes per primary care encounter. And along the x-axis, you can see the age of patients who had primary care encounters in our health system. While the median number of ICD codes for each encounter increases about linearly as the age of the patient increases, you can see that the potential disease interactions increases geometrically in the same progression. This means that the clinical complexity of older adults with higher comorbidity counts is very high and can act as a barrier to achieving correct diagnoses in a timely way. This preliminary data from our health system also describes the distribution of diagnoses in primary care among older adults and highlights the importance of considering a very broad diagnostic scope when trying to achieve diagnostic excellence. Along the y-axis in this figure, you can see the cumulative proportion of all diagnoses measured by ICD codes. Along the x-axis is the rank from most common to least common of the different ICD codes that are encountered. The curve, the black line, shows the cumulative proportion that are covered by these diagnoses as we move from most common to least common. The green numbers at the top suggest that if we only looked at the 50 most common ICD codes, we would include about 61% of all diagnoses based on those codes. However, if we wanted to build a system that covered more diagnoses, 
including the 500 most common ICD codes, would still only cover 87% of all diagnoses. Thus, a key challenge in building diagnostic clinical decision support systems is the very broad range of diagnoses, or the diagnostic scope, that are encountered. This is the conceptual model that has informed our work and is inspired by this paper from Adler Milstein et al. in JAMA from 2021. Our conceptual model is adapted from this important paper that describes the diagnostic process as one of wayfinding. The important characteristics of this wayfinding process include the fact that it is iterative, hence the circular or spiral shaped footsteps, meaning that patients, clinicians, and sometimes caregivers don't immediately arrive at the right diagnosis at once. There is often an iterative process of gathering information, reflecting, gathering more information, asking more questions, reflecting, doing more tests, and so on in a cyclical fashion until a final diagnosis can be reached. Another important feature of this process as we understand it is that it is also a cooperative process that includes not just the clinician, but also the patient and the caregiver when they are present. A key limitation in the field of AI and ML diagnostic clinical decision support systems is that few systems have been developed that account for this process and help to facilitate it. On this slide, we review several of the key knowledge gaps and obstacles to achieving predictive clinical decision support for diagnostic excellence among older adults in primary care. We will also then highlight our proposed innovation to help overcome those limitations. The first is that older adults have distinct diagnostic scope, meaning that systems trained on broad populations or on younger populations may not be relevant for older adults. Therefore, we will build and validate all models based on data from older adults only. Second, many existing diagnostic clinical decision support systems are proprietary. This means they may not be accessible in low resource settings, they may not be easily reproducible or transparent in a manner that is sufficient to fully evaluate their methods, their equity, and their effectiveness. Therefore, our project is committed to building fully open source models to promote accessibility, transparency, and equity. As discussed before on a prior slide, many clinical decision support systems that use predictive methods have a limited diagnostic scope. For example, there are several systems that are built specifically to identify diagnoses like heart failure, cancer, and rheumatologic conditions. Now, while these are important diagnoses that do require or would benefit from clinical decision support, at the bedside, clinicians and patients are often faced with a diagnostic scope in the hundreds or thousands of different disease etiologies, depending on how they're categorized. Therefore, our system will include hundreds or thousands of such disease systems to make our clinical decision support system useful and meaningful at the bedside. Another limitation in existing clinical decision support systems is that clinicians are often required to take some action despite uncertainty in a final diagnosis. Therefore, our system, although it will provide predictions related to what diagnoses may be likely to encounter, it will also provide suggestions for what testing and workup may be relevant in the absence of a definitive final diagnosis. Next, many existing systems are clinician facing only. This means that the clinician is responsible for inputting information into the system, seeing the output of the system, and then relaying that back to the patient. However, Based on our conceptual model of iterative and collaborative wayfinding in the diagnostic process, we think that the patient and the caregiver when present should be equal partners in the diagnostic process with the clinician. Therefore, our clinical decision support interface will face the clinician, the patient, and the caregiver when present to promote that collaborative and iterative process. 
Finally, one of the large obstacles to training AI and machine learning systems to provide diagnostic clinical decision support is the lack of gold standard training labels on a large scale. AI ML models require definitive outcomes or gold standard training labels for supervised learning tasks. And in the context of diagnosis and primary care, it is very challenging to achieve those because of the time consuming nature of building labels and also because of inherent clinical uncertainty in those labels. Therefore, we will rely on imitation learning and collective intelligence strategies inspired by work in the strategic games literature to leverage labels that are existing in the EHR and then provide those in a social norming uh, manner to clinicians as a way to guide the diagnostic process. With all of this in mind, here we review the specific aims of our Penn AI Tech pilot project supported through the A2 Collective. In the first aim, we will train and validate deep learning models that will predict the consensus diagnosis and also the testing and evaluation plans of a clinicians who care for older adults in a primary care setting. In our second aim, we will conduct a pilot study in deploying these models at the bedside to understand their feasibility, acceptability, and usability in preparation for a future large-scale pragmatic trial. Thank you for listening, and we are grateful to the Penn AI Tech Pilot Program for supporting this work.